The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Brandon has a show. Here he is. Welcome to the Brandon Peters Show. I'm Brandon, and this week we'll be shifting gears on the format. I'd mentioned in the first episode that once a month there will be a roundtable style discussion with multiple participants, and we've arrived. So joining me today, an uh, entertainment journalist who has worked with the Hollywood Reporter, Culturess, E! News, the dark goddess of the underworld, Sharari Truri. Hey! And next, a staff writer for Horror Hound, director of both the Horror Hound Film Festival and PopCon International Film Festival, is Audrey Lane. Hi. And rounding out our group from the Saturday Evening Post. He also contributes to graphic policy, and you can buy his latest novel, Inhabited, which I stand by as awesome, from Amazon. It's Troy Brownfield. Hello. Hello. Thank you all for joining me on this uh, historic event in the world of podcasting. Or maybe just an idiot idea from my brain. Who knows? We'll see how this plays out. Uh, for the first roundtable, we're going to have some fun, and we're going to play like a game of sorts, and I'll lay out the rules here. We're going to take a classic, beloved film and remake it in a different decade that it was originally produced from. Today, we're going to pretend as if that film has not happened yet. Generally, the same film is going to happen, just the decorations are a little bit different <laughs> around there. And the film we're going to be doing is... Back to the Future. Steven Spielberg presents Back to the Future, a Robert Zemeckis film. Marty leads an ordinary life. No McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. Well, history is going to change. And 1985 is not his year. But Dr. Brown is about to change all that. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? He's sending Marty 30 years back in time. It works! It's a flying saucer from outer space! Now, he's trapped in the past. This has got to be a dream. About to meet... Chocolate. ...his future father. He's a baby. Tough. Wow! And he's making an impression on his mother. He's an absolute dream. And he can sleep in my room. Anything you do could have serious repercussions on future events. Now, he's got to make his mother and father fall in love. For crying out loud, I haven't even been born yet. And only Dr. Brown can help him get back to the future. Are you telling me that this sucker is nuclear? Precisely. Michael J. Fox. Whoa, this is heavy. Christopher Lloyd. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? Back to the future. So no longer is this 1985. We are producing it in the 1990s. And for this one, the 90s, I'm going to go with is an indeterminate. So everything we do doesn't tie to a specific year in the 90s. We're just generally the best version of X from the 90s and the best version of X from the 90s goes together and fits what we'd like it to. We'll be recasting the major roles in the film and (laughs) taking a spin on a few specific details. Uh, At the end, we'll kick back and enjoy whatever Frankenstein's monster we've struck lightning. (laughs) All right, so we've all seen Back to the Future at least once. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Yes. I I meant to ask you when you invited me, uh, what's Back to the Future? Okay. (laughs) Okay. It's got a phone booth. Great Great. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, they get in a phone booth, and they go, there's like a new one. There's three of them now. So <laughs> we're currently in the midst of the 35th anniversary for the show. There have been drive-in screenings galore in the film, and its sequels will debut on 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray this month. Every little role and every little detail in this film is iconic. I mean, it's never ever been remade and had a way later sequel produced. Aside from the cartoon spinoff, it's a film and series that's just been allowed to be i mean there's been like a commercial here and there that reminds you but yeah like super bowl commercials yeah. or something cool like that there's been the ride that got replaced by the simpsons 
mm-hmm. which is also a cool ride. But I mean, this is a good. But it's, it's a cool ride. I mean, if you're gonna do that and not get me angry, all right. <laughs> So let's mess with it, because what we're doing isn't real. So don't get mad at our remake. (laughs) How do you guys, like, remakes, I'm just, Aaron Newworth, friend of the show, Ben, he always says it great. He goes, I'm not against remakes. I'm against bad movies. So. Mm -hmm. That is key. That is key. I do have a little button that I wear from time to time time that says, fuck remakes, because I genuinely don't like most of the ones that have been remade, but I'm Mm -hmm. not opposed to it if it were good or brought something new or did something different. And that's why I kind of like what you're doing because I think it can go anywhere. I mean, you've got four vastly different people and thoughts and everything. So this is going to be really fun. I I hope so. (laughs) Did, did you guys, I mean, were you guys like, Oh, this is silly, crazy. No, actually it was hard. (laughs) It was harder than I thought it it was hard. There's, there's, there's a couple in there. I was like, but I mean, it's so crazy because this movie stands alone. It hasn't been remade, so therefore everything is what it already is, and it's easy and tough to think outside the box. It's it's easy to kind of go similar, and then you're trying to be like, well, who is like Michael J. Fox? And you're like, no, 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 be like Marty, who is a lot of exactly. Michael J. Fox. But I cursed you a few times. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, this- I, I was like, damn it. <laughs> this kind of I'll, I'll give a background of where this like weird idea comes from. So when I did blu-ray and dvd qc out in burbank i had a game like my sister was in college at the time and i just like a mental exercise where we would email each other back we'd be like all right this movie remake it now i'm like we, we weren't picking like the thing i've added to us to date so we'd be like here's a time email it then and we'd look at each other's like casting list so like cast the justice league or something like that nice and it was a fun little game we'd play like once a week or something like that and kind of bring it together. So I'm kind of churning it into this. So we'd kind of have some fun, but let's, let's mess with this thing. So we'll, we'll talk about our picks and stuff and we'll kind of, Oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll, before we move to the next role, we'll vote who we liked. And if there is a tie, cause there's four of us that could happen <laughs> or we all won, one one our cause we stand by our picks. I will spin a wheel and whoever lands on gets two votes. So you win. Ooh. So that's how we'll that's how we'll decide. And once we have this cast down, stay tuned to the end of the show. There will be a trailer for this movie. Trust me, it's gonna be sweet. So let's start with Marty McFly, originally played by Michael J. Fox. Doc, I'm from the future. I came here in a time machine that you invented. Sharari, let's start with you. Where are you going with this? What direction are you taking with this role? Who are you thinking? From the 1990s, you got to... I went through teen movies, horror movies. What did you do to look this up? I went with Will Smith. Oh. (laughs) That was like the first... I don't know why that was the first thing that came to me. And admittedly, that might also impact my other decisions because I started to go into this route of like... I'm going to preface this by saying I, I do like the idea of remakes because I also feel like you can hopefully diversify casts when we're doing remakes because one of the hardest things that I had going back and looking at people that were popular back in the 90s or either up and up and coming actors or people who were popular and I was asking friends it was a lot of white names I was like well that's not great (laughs) like I like we I thought that would be a little difficult at first but like I I don't know that's why I go with Will Smith because one I think he's an amazing actor I think it would be interesting to see him in this role. The only other person that came to mind for me that I thought could be interesting, but I don't know if this would hurt because of the other films he did, like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I don't know. That might be a choice. These two might be very weird choices, but those are I the said, two think mind. outside the box. No, those are the ones that came to me, but I definitely was thinking like in general with this, re- both the recasting and rethinking of it is, Maybe there could be some fun ways that you can diversify the cast as well, and it doesn't, and it could make sense or it could make no sense, and right. I'm fine with either one of those. I I I went in with that mentality of where could I gender bend or, or change yeah. race on things, yeah. Yeah. but then my stupid self sent you guys all this and said let's do this in the '90s. So I'm traveling 30 years back in in time, and I'm like. With the essence of Back to the Future, is it was a fun movie, and all of a sudden I was getting dark thoughts about where this could go if I did that <laughs> because of the time travel aspect. Right. Where we're time travel. If I would have done the 2000s and gone to the 70s, I might have been less white. That's where I'm explaining myself from because I mm-hmm. immediately went there and I was like, then I went to the 60s. I'm like, oh, that's oh man. With both, like, I was thinking of the scene later on with 
if say if I switched Marty to a girl and then she's with his dad in the car at the prom, I'm like, I don't like that. I don't like <laughs> I don't like that. So that's where that's why if I look like Whitey McWhiterson with a lot of mine, that was kind of where like cause I got dark thoughts and I was like, oh man, I I had the wrong de- I had the wrong decade or the right decade for Doing but diversifying like that could be that could though make it such a more interesting. I mean, not that the original story isn't interesting, but I do think playing with. I mean, let's be real, like playing with time travel, going back and thinking of right. how things are in this period versus this period. That's um, Back to the Future. I think gets a little deep. It doesn't go that deep, but there's right. a possibility for there to be some really interesting storytelling because right. of that and because of the messages mm-hmm. that. That's exactly what I thought about when I was thinking of what would be awesome if we had, in general, a very diverse, like, BIPOC cast. And then you're going back into the 60s and what is that time? What's mm-hmm. going on in that time? And maybe if we want to get deep, like, what are some maybe moving messages that could happen with someone going backwards and then, come, and then coming back? And what right. they would from that. And what they could teach people back then that they hadn't quickened up to enough yet. So that's, those are some things I thought that could be interesting. But that's... that's true. But also Will Smith is Will Smith that I thought it he'd is. be part in. It I was works. like, it happened, maybe. I, yeah, I'm just saying that might tell you about me as a writer is I can't not go dark when I think about because I, I think about a lot of movies that will go and friendly tell it back then, and then they get uh-huh. knocked for not being harsh and real about it and brushing right. over the top. And I'm like, well, Back to the Future's kind of based on just being goofy, fun stuff. Yeah. So that's, yeah. yeah. But I like, no, I was right there with you. I like the idea, but I'm like, Right now, I'm like preview. I've got a lot of whiteies on here because I I got I got scared when I did that because I'm like I want to keep it from being dark, or but there are lessons and yeah. stuff like For that. Sure. Troy, I'm, I'm gonna where did you go? Go ahead, jump on. I'm gonna go ahead and cop to that too. And I got really stuck in where in the '60s it was taking place. That was yeah because I I got this whole thing about like so much of this stuff, even though it's, it's flirting with different things but it's not as overt and i think you get too deep in the 60s you're talking sexual revolution and stuff and there's gonna you know there's gonna be some of this stuff that they're trying to keep hidden in the original back of the future that's actually going on is a lot more overt and so i started getting this thing of like okay it's got to be pre-jfk assassination it's got to be pre Beatles. <laughs> it's got to be like the the innocent part of the 60s quote unquote before it gets like really 60s right. you know like, right which, we which, find which is another ball. way of saying <laughs> yeah which is another way of saying there's a whole lot of white people in it by uh, picking a blah 90s i went to a raging decade of change and rev- i'm like oh no what did it i mean both of these decades both 90s and i mean not that like any decade hasn't had some insane shit go down mm-hmm. but Going from the 90s to the 60s, I think those are two insane decades to be playing with in terms yeah. of both the past and the messaging that could come from it, for sure. Mm-hmm. Whether it wants to be over or not, whether it's just a goofy movie or not, there's still two iconic decades mm-hmm. that you could play around with a lot. So, yeah. Crazy. So who did you pick, Troy? I had a, a lead and an alternate. This is where, it, like, well, you we know, can fire one homework. of them, guys. We can fire, we can <laughs> shoot, like, yeah. a half of this movie with one guy and fire. And then, <laughs> well... You know, I started getting into the whole thing. It's like, okay, if we're doing it in the 90s and if we're going to take a popular sitcom TV star and make him a movie star like they did with Michael J. Fox, what person would that be? And the person that I kept coming back to because he would be at the right age at this time is Fred Savage. Okay. And part of that is because he's already been through the 60s. And I think that that's one of the <laughs> things that be nice. a, a meta, meta commentary through the entire movie. Oh, my God, it's it's Kevin. But he's, you know, and it, I think that it would be kind of like a reinforcement of the uh, rounding joke. The other guy that I thought of who, depending on which part of the 90s, wouldn't maybe quite be there yet. But the other guy I thought of was Seth Green. He um, was in my mind. Yeah. yeah, because he's he's in this space of Scott Evil and Kenny and Can't Hardly Wait and everything where he's kind of defining himself. Marty, there's a lot of reacting. He's also got TV. He was on Buffy for three years. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. yeah. Mar- Marty's a role with a lot of reacting. And so that's one of the other reasons I thought of Fred Savage, because like some of his reactions to just insane stuff going around him was... Hilarious. It's one of the things that Michael J. Fox sells so well is that, you know, he's, he's very stressed. He's very stressed in Back to the Future. Okay. Audrey, who do you got? I had three that I narrowed down. So the first one was Corin Nimick. And Ooh. I know maybe a lot of people don't know who he is, but I think his comedic timing is great. And I love Parker Lewis Can't Lose. And he's done, you know, some things here and there, but I thought about him. So he is one of my the three that I had. The other one was Mark Wahlberg. And the fight I had 
between that is we didn't know until a little bit later in his career that Mark Wahlberg had really good comedic timing and he's really good, not just action, not just, you know, playing the psycho. So I thought about him, but the main one for me, and it goes back to what you said, making a TV star, maybe into a movie star, is Johnny Galecki. I don't know what it is. I think it's his size. I think it's his his look. I think it's his ability to be awkward, to play into anything he does. So I think my final one was Johnny Galecki. Okay. I guess me, I have two here. I had Ethan Embry, who mm. I really liked. And I guess we're going to be, we're gonna be picking him. from this Can't Hardly Wait cast like crazy, I guess. But uh, <laughs> Ethan Embry and I had going, not not your Savage, but the brother of the other Savage on TV, Will Fradel, the older brother oh, yeah. from Boy Meets World, who also yeah. voiced Terry McGinnis on Batman Beyond. And he was in a little, of remakes. A little re- rom-com called Trojan War that I liked back in the 90s because I watched Jennifer Love Hewitt whenever she was. But those were my two. I had Joseph Gordon-Levitt maybe in the mind. but I, 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 I did too, but then I thought he was too young for my yeah. vision of the 90s. And that's kind of how it was hard to say, okay, if I'm in this period of the 90s and I picked this person that didn't really come into the late 90s versus this one that came in in well, the early 90s. So indeterminate I was, 90s. So I overthought the shit out of this. We all probably <laughs> did. Yeah. I'm literally looking at, I have like notes and bullet points. <laughs> I like went hard on this. <laughs> okay, so anybody got any more picks? Not for Marty. Not for Marty. Okay, so Sharari, you have Will Smith. Will Smith. Troy, you are Fred Savage. Yeah. Audrey, you are. I'm gonna have to stick with. I'm gonna stick with Johnny Galecki. Johnny Galecki, and I'll I'll do it. I'll go with. I'll go Will Fredo. I'll take Ethan That's Embry out of there. Sharari, do you change your vote at all? You still you stick in Will Smith. I like Will. I'm going. Troy. <laughs> okay. I can't go with Johnny Galecki because he appears later on my list. <laughs> I figured. Oh, yeah. I figured. I figured. I figured so, as much. Yeah, I don't know. And, I mean, I like I like Will Smith, but like you said, that opens up a lot of things as to why it's a, a different movie. So, I don't know. I there's going to be, a, there's gonna be, there's gonna be a separate think- episode of this show where we all get back and we talk about what a Back to the Future with Will Smith going back to the 60s, and we're going to have the hard conversation about <laughs> everything. Right. How can it just get I like, it? There's That's a lot it. to talk about about this. There is, like, Shirari hit yeah. a hot topic that could drive this way off course for the whole episode, and we get, like, two people casted. Right, right. We, we, we can convene again. I like it. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Or so, it could be, like, Grey's it. Anatomy, where, like, they just throw everyone, in, <laughs> and they say... We're going to just make what we want. <laughs> with yes. the oh, okay. So what was your pick, Audrey? Are you going um, with my years or did someone convince you? You mean like for the final vote? I yeah, think this- I'd have to go with, I really like Will because I think even though he does a lot of voice work as well, and that's been kind of his bread and butter for like the, the last. The Fredo Will? Yeah. Okay. Oh there yeah. I'm sorry. Will- yeah. Not, not Will Smith. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I- double Will. No, I- <laughs> Will Fredo. Yeah. I- okay. I- I- I'm going to have to go with that one up yeah all right and i i vote for will i guess will fredo will be marty mcfly in our little remake that everyone's going to love so <laughs> now here's another tough one dr emmett brown how could i have been so careless 1.21 gigawatts tom how am i going to generate that kind of power it can't be done and we'll start with audrey Okay, that was the quickest one I cast. Like, it was seriously like boom, 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 like two, three minutes. So I have down for my choices. I had Michael Douglas, but I crossed him out. So I have last Tim Robbins, Mm. then Nick Cage, (laughs) and then (laughs) Sam Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson as Doc. So I kind of had the same thought of maybe some characters you could change. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even think of it really as changing the race because when I think of Doc Brown and how wild and zany and everything that he bought, I immediately thought of Sam Jackson. He just embodies so much. And can you imagine mm-hmm. the little twist? Everything has to be, has to have the Sam Jackson vernacular. So he's this <laughs> cool scientist, spaced out, curses a lot, but loves his buddy Marty. He talks nerd shit with him. He introduces him to the music. <laughs> so when he does go back, the whole change of music is the psychedelic 60s. So I, I had a whole thing about Doc Brown. So, I just yes. imagine now I want 
the scene of Sam Jackson where he's on top of the clock tower and see and he clicks him and he's like and he looks down and it unclicks and he's like I just want to see that I want to yeah. let him improv yeah. whatever he wants there I, I I will say what helped me with casting Doc Brown was you know what I don't need Christopher Lloyd I don't need someone to replicate that I'm just gonna mm-hmm. trust an actor to do their thing with that role that yep. was one that I didn't want a certain thing Troy Doc Jim Carrey okay yeah <laughs> That was, and I <laughs> had that too, and I thought it would be the obvious. Sh- I did. I had him yeah. down on right. my list at some point. I had Jim Carrey. Okay. My first question was, who would be crazy? Because Christopher Lloyd is obviously an awesome kind of crazy in that. And I'm like, 90s crazy Jim Carrey. It was like that fast when I. <laughs> awesome. Sharari, where were you at with Dr. Emmett Brown? So Sam Jackson was was a potential here because I, I was still going, to, hmm, like, how do, if I wanted to add some differences here. I had Keith David. Oh, I love him. He I, cro- uh, yes. Because I saw him, what's it, Future Man? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's why like it, it inspired me to be like, yeah, I could see him doing this. Another person I had was Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy to me is like- That's I a huge of, get for the movie at the time. I didn't know. <laughs> that's I, what I was like. I was trying to keep my- but I'm, I'm thinking legitimately crazy thoughts here, but I, I also- I get what like, I want. But also, I was like, what if he played a few different people because that's his bag, too? He's Marty's whole family. That's what Michael J. Fox does in the sequel. I like it. I like I'm it. Saying, I, could, I could see him play, or there's like something like he's Doc and Marty's dad. Like some weird like thing where there's like, oh, that's like my dad and there's this old other male figure that like I'm into and I and I appreciate and mentors me. I but don't is know. he going to be still black if he plays Marty's dad? Because that's the kind of cool thing with <laughs> coming to America. He's the old Jewish guy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And that no is, one knew he, it like at all. He could be anything. He, I love <laughs> it. He could be anything. And that's kind of why I liked it because it's just the fact that he morphs so well. So yeah, he could be the whole cast if he wanted to. I don't know. <laughs> it could just be him and Jim Carrey. And we figure it out. <laughs> we figure it out. They're, they're, your show's done. <laughs> there you go. We're going oh, well, to tag him on this. Is. I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. I think the big ones for me probably were Eddie Murphy and Sam Jackson. Those gotcha. are the once I once I decided some guy goes and does their thing, I my mind just unlocked with people. But I have one my top because I was thinking I need some '90s comedic television. Uh, I went with David Allen Greer. Nice. Because I think he could pay, put like this weird, and he never really got a good shot at something big comedically. And he was hilarious on Living Color. Like he was one of my mm-hmm. top guys on there. So I had him as Doc Brown. But I also, my mind blew up and I, I had like Eugene Levy in there. Nice. I had oh, Donald, yeah. Donald Logue could kind of give you similar to Christopher Lloyd, I think. Daniel Stern, John Lithgow. I had it just Henry Winkler, like had him going. But I, I would think David nice. Allen Greer my, was my pick for the top, top one just because I always wanted more for it. Like him and Phil Lamar, I don't know why those guys aren't on top of the world right now. I love them both, but that's who my pick was for that. So in the Dr. Emmett Brown thing, who is your vote, Sharari? Ooh, I'm going to say I'm kind of actually now leaning towards Samuel L. Jackson because I do feel like there is something to it's just whoever plays that person just makes the doc role whatever they want to make it. And I think that could be the beauty of this being remade a few times is whoever's doc just brings their own essence into it so i feel sam could do it for sure and in the 90s he's he's not what we know he was breaking out into commercial films yes. more in the 90s right so he'd be yeah it's not like oh sam jackson again no it's <laughs> exactly which I, but you I'm know. Fine with him happening again and again That's oh yeah i i love the guy but it's everything so troy what's your vote uh sam yeah audrey sam sam all jackson right. well it doesn't even matter i'm i'm voting for sam jack i kind of like the the all eddie murphy's back to the future <laughs> Like, I want to see that. Okay. Um, I'll start this one because this was my, this was like the toughest one for me was Lorraine Baines. Just relax, Calvin. You've got a big bruise on your head. <sighs> ah. Where are my pants? Over there. On my hope chest. I've never seen purple underwear before, Calvin. Oh, yeah. Because forever, the first Back to the Future has always been my favorite. And I think the difference that sets it apart for me was always Crispin Glover's George McFly. It's an element that's not present in the other two movies at all. And it's I think it's what kind of carries that movie and gives it that unique angle. However, I had no problem coming up with other George McFly's. In fact, mm-hmm. I had one come to me like right away. But we'll get to that. We're at Lorraine. 
This one, I was just like, I don't know who fits this bill this at all. I had Rachel Lee Cook as my Lorraine. <laughs> that was all like, and maybe it's a she's all that thing. Who knows? But she's who I came up with to fit it. I also had like Drew Barrymore, Heather Graham, Gwyneth Paltrow, because maybe because I saw her in a fat suit and shallow howl that I could see her in the old. I don't. Katie Holmes were the only ones that I think it was like, it's like a tough role. Like it's a really complex role to pull off what she is in the nineties. Yeah. And then what she is when you go back, it's, there's like a wholesomeness, but a little bit of, meh. and when she's old, she's just defeated. And when, when you see Leah Thompson, the first, like there's no way she feels like that same girl. I mean, the makeup job's great, but it was just really hard for me to, to find the perfect, actress that gives you that Leah Tom- what Leah Thompson gives because I think that is just a strength on what she brings yeah. to the whole film but that that's where I was so I ended up Rachel Lee Cook was mine Troy you've been going randomly so let's go to you okay tried to reverse engineer it just sounds like you did that I tried to think about who would be older Lorraine you know and then go back to and the person I landed on was Nev Campbell mm. who was she was Screen was happening mid '90s, but when you ah. think about the craft and so forth, she she did some heavy lifting. But then she was also in Wild Things, so she could do the other side, and that's kind of where I came up with that. Audrey, I had this one was the hardest one for me, one of the hardest ones. So I have double duty for one of these actresses. So I've got Brittany Murphy, oh. I've got Alicia Silverstone, and Drew Barrymore. And honestly, I think it's, I think it comes down baby to Drew. I think she's got more of the range. I think that she could pull off the mom and maybe, you know, the teenage version. So I had Jennifer Aniston too on my old list, but I don't know. I'm going to go with Drew. Go with Drew. Okay. Go with Drew. (laughs) Yeah, it's tough. And then Shari, your turn. A lot of these names are what I had too. I think the one that hasn't been mentioned yet, and it's a good comment to think about range here because that's that's a big part of it. I was almost thinking of who would I want to see like in the sixties, <laughs> like as well as the nineties. But like I was like, who would who would work and knock us out of the park? I had Winona right around here too. Okay. Um, She's like the it girl in the midnight. Like yeah, so. I could like, I could see it. I wasn't sure though because it's also. Because she is who she is, if like the problem with with her was like, would I just be like just thinking that's Winona Ryder like the whole time and not be able to concentrate? So I like Drew Barrymore too, though. That's I and I thought of like again, who would I like to see in both of these decades? And to see her in the sixties, that could be pretty. That could be pretty fun to see that. I had Alicia Silverstone too, but Winona was the one that hasn't been studied. That I was like, would this work? And I thought of her too. Yeah. Excellent. All right, then let's vote. Sharari, start with uh, you. <laughs> I I don't know. I will say I think thinking about this more, I like Drew Barrymore a lot for this. I think it could work. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with it. Even though like I like Winona too, I feel like I don't I don't know if it would work as well for me. I could see Drew doing this. I could see her doing well. Maybe I'll I'll keep Winona for the girlfriend or something. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you can, you can see, that's where I, yeah. Mm-hmm. All Other right, than I, the dark hair, I think she fits girlfriend. Audrey, yeah. where where are you going with this? I'm gonna have to stick with Drew. I yeah, I'm gonna have to stick with my girlfriend. Two for Drew. Troy. I'll go Drew Barrymore as well. All right, Drew Barrymore it is. I, I think she's great. So but I just didn't think of her. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird because I, I have this problem with Drew Barrymore. She's like a couple years older than me, but I feel like she's much older than me. Not not like she looks much older than me, just her maturity or just she's been around so long that I, and she's been, been a star so that I don't realize. I think we're like five years difference maybe or something like that. It's really weird. I'm like, oh yeah, she's been around the same age as me then. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, George McFly, Marty's father. I'm George. George McFly. I'm your density. I mean... Destiny. Troy, you haven't gone first yet. This is Johnny Galecki. On okay. The nice. Gotcha. George McFly. So. <laughs> All right, Shirari, where are you going with this one? This one, I'm a little thrown off because I was, I, when I was going into it, I was like, it's Will Smith. So I was like, who would be this It's Eddie Murphy, <laughs> Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. I also had hey, like, when that was my thought, I had like Lawrence Fishburne. Omar Epps, like these are people he I can have mixed parents. It's he fine. Can have parents. He can so have those mixed- were the two, those were the two that I thought of because I I love Lawrence Fishburne, so I thought that could work. 
trying to think if this would work. Would Tom Hanks work in this time frame? He's too old. Is he too old? Think, at this point? Yeah, I they're, they're. I think they're both a little. Just we need because we need. Yeah, because we needed to to match up with Drew. That's the other thing. So, this is my problem. I can't think of white nineties actors. <laughs> <laughs> all good all good hey, this is me i'm 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 having the opposite problem most people so but i don't know those are the two so maybe if i hear others i'll get inspiration but omar helps lawrence fishburne where i was going initially uh, with this and i could have seen lawrence doing it for sure audrey here's what we get in that tricky time so i had Devin Sawa, but I think he, again, if we think all the 1990 to 99, I think as long as it's there and I'm not pinpointing the time, I think he would be okay. But I had Josh Hartnett, but my main one was Jason London. Cause I felt like it, you know, dad needed to have that vulnerability. And I think the London boys, it could have been either one. I mean, and then I'm thinking of popularity at that time. And could he pull off the acting between the teenager and the dad? So I went with Jason London. Okay. Mine hit me like that. I have Freddie Prince Jr. because I think he could easily play dopey, dorky without yeah. confidence. And then he can grow the confidence later on. But he kind of just, he's got that same phys- kind of physicality he could show a little more. So he hit me like right off the bat. I also had, I had Ethan Embry in there in case he didn't get the role. We might call him back. <laughs> he, could do, he could do it too. And then I, I, I thought, I was like, oh, Topher Grace maybe. But Freddie Prince Jr. was hit me like oh yeah like that's that's who i would uh, that's who i would go with but so that's where we are i'll vote first this time i got freddie where are you going audrey i don't want to say yet i'm really caught between freddie and johnny damn (sighs) there's a hard place and there's a rock you're right (laughs) you know i for george i think the uh, uh, freddie freddie okay damn troy where are you going i'm gonna go johnny just to cause drama Cause drama. Oh, Sharari, we could have a tie. Or you could go with one of your own picks just to spite. <laughs> it falls on me. <laughs> it falls on you. Hey, at least we have I a know, close I like one. Jason, I like the Jason London one. I was like, I'm thinking now. Well, like we can vote Jason London. I know, Audrey goes like, well, I got both. I like I like him. I like Jason and I like Freddie Friends because of just who Freddie was at the time. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could see that working. I could see it. Okay. And because that because that would mean that he is with Drew, so I could oh, okay. I, I, I can see that chemistry working. We never got yeah. that movie, and we we avoided because we voted Drew. We avoided my she's all that reunion that would have been there. So <laughs> yep. that's not there. Okay, Sharara, we're gonna go to you first now for Biff Tannen, the bully. It's your car. Your insurance should pay for it. I, I want to know who's gonna pay for this. I spilled beer all over when that car smashed into me. Who's gonna pay my cleaning bill? I got yeah. ideas. This ideas. is a force again where some of my things are going to be a little left field. I had I had Eddie Murphy on this because I thought that would also be funny for him to be a bully, but I thought maybe we could switch the gender on this. I don't know too, and I I had Queen Latifah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she's it's Tiff, not Biff. <laughs> I like it. I could go. see her kicking some ass. I was go. just gonna say, like, I could see her, and again, I would have seen her kick Will Smith's ass if that was the situation. I would have loved to have seen it, but I don't know. I was gonna say that that could be an option too if we wanted to play around a bit with like the dynamics here. But yeah, those were the two that I had. All right, Troy. Okay, mine's a uh, man. I think I agonized over Biff more than just about anybody because that's. <laughs> Such a specific role. And this is a weird one. Michael Cudlitz, who played uh, oh, yeah. Abraham oh, yeah. on The Walking yeah. Dead. Perfect. He, yeah. He, he was in... Gross Point Gross Blank Point kind Blank. of played that yeah. character. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But it, it took... But he was, you know... It, it, that guy feels like he's been like 40 forever. So it's a little <laughs> bit... Yeah. A little well, bit harder. But he'd be he, great he old Biff. Great old Biff when he... Yeah. Made, yeah. made me spill beer on my... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to go next. I go, I, I have Jake Busey. Oh, <laughs> nice. Kind of was that all through the 90s. I also it came to mind, you'd have to have the right height or build actor next to him by Ryan Phillippe, but he's kind of petite. So I don't know if he'd, he'd work in that sense. And then he's thin. He's not so short, though. He's what, like 5'9"? Yeah. I also had Jonathan Brandis, the late Jonathan Brandis. Could have been that time. Mark Wahlberg came up for me here, Audrey. I didn't have him. He wasn't going to be Marty in my world. 
but <laughs> well, see, the only reason, and I know we can change Biff, but yeah. I was thinking Biff needed to be a little bit more imposing, right. like, or he could be like the short, stocky wrestler dude yeah. too. So yeah, I, I, I get that. I got Jake Busey for for Biff here. I'm gonna show his teeth to everybody. Yes. And Audrey, where are you at? Okay, I I don't know why I you know some of the people that you talked about I did contemplate, but the the two that I went with were Ben Affleck because I'm thinking his days and confused bully days and uh, he's you know the ass big, man from Mallrats. Yep. But I think my f- Brendan Fraser. Okay, it's a bit different for him then, but I could. I could do that. And I'm thinking of imposing. I mean, Biff wasn't just a, a bully because, I mean, there's certain, there's different, let me explain this. There's different types of bullies. There's the bully that just talks trash and makes you want to punch them and fight them. Mm-hmm. And those are the worst ones. Then you've got your Biff. He's big and imposing, but he's stupid. So you can outthink him all the time. So I went with Brendan Fraser because he kind of embodies both of those. He can be a little brutish, but he also is big and, you know, when you think about why everybody cowered down to him, because Biff was, he was big and a doofus, but he was big. So those are my two. They used to describe me that way. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Troy, vote number one. Oh, man. This is tough. This is a really genuinely tough one. Hearing all the options, I think I might land on Brendan Fraser. Okay. All right. Sharari, your, your vote. Oh, this is tough. My husband's overhearing this, by the way, and he texts me and he's like, why didn't we mention Chris Farley? And I was like, I had to remember if he was, when he passed away, because he passed away in 97. So indeterminate like, 90s. He can still right, be. Right, indeterminate 90. <laughs> and I was like, would, would I want to see Chris Farley be really mean? I mean, I know he could probably do it, but he could be like a silly bully. But that being said, I, I actually really like the Busey option here. I could see it. I have like an odd love person, so I think it works. Wow. I, I'll, go, I'll go on the Busey train. All right, Audrey. <laughs> Damn it. Man, I'm caught between Brendan and, and, and Busey. Damn. <sighs> the choices we have to make. <laughs> Life or death for the free podcast. It's awesome. Life or death. <laughs> Shit. I'm... I really like Busey, but I think I think the Busey performance would be too close to the original Biff. I'm going to go with Brendan. All right, and I'm going with Jake. So it's our first spinoff. Ooh. Here we go. At least we got one of these. I mean, you tease it. It has to happen once, right? I know, right? All right. Here we go. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Whose vote gets duplicated? And my vote got duplicated. I did not rig that. I promise. I can I can share my screen and show you. We believe you. It was a close one. Those were both really good ones, though. All right. Jake Busey is our Biff. And I do not own stock in pickerwheel.com, just so you know. All right. So Jake Busey it is. Our next pick is Jennifer Parker, the girlfriend. How about a ride, mister? Jennifer. Oh, you a sight for sore eyes. Let me look at you. Marty, you're acting like you haven't seen me in a week. I haven't. This was really kind of easy. Remember, this movie's being made for the first time. We don't know if the sequels are going to go the same way, just the first movie is, so she might not get replaced by Elizabeth Shue in the sequel. <laughs> we can uh, begin. Who hasn't begun in a while? I think I'll go. Okay. I had, and I, I think, Sharari, you said Brittany Mer. Who said Brittany Murphy earlier for something? I thought one of you did. I think you did. I thought, I don't, I don't think you did. <laughs> I thought you did. I, mean, I know it was me, but I thought someone else said it. Okay, so for the girlfriend, I had Brittany Murphy and Rachel Lee Cook. So I was with you on Rachel Lee Cook just for different roles. <laughs> Troy. I also had a She's All That cast member, and that was Gabrielle Union. Ah, nice. Very nice. Very nice. Terrari. I think I'm going to go with Winona to have like a quirky. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Bringing it back around. I, I could see her being this girlfriend and then getting weirder and quirkier <laughs> as, the, as the sequels happen. I could see <laughs> That'd be I good. Could see I'm all. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> me, I had a Daniel Harris because I want to see her more okay. things. I also thought this would be a spot where they would put like stunt cast somebody like Britney Spears at the time. <laughs> You know, um, and then they're like, well, we'll replace her in the sequel. I don't know. <laughs> but and, and the underdog one I had was Sarah Pauly, 
at the time. She just had like go and stuff. But I really, I always liked her and she's a hell of a director now. But that's where I was, I was going there. But yeah, I had Danielle Harris because she was coming in. She was on Roseanne at the time and she had uh, Last Boy Scout and other stuff. Urban Legend. Yeah, she was in that one. But yeah, that's where I was at. So let's start with Sharari. Who are you voting? You're going to stick Winona? These are really tough. When Debra <laughs> popped up as an option, I was like, I really like that. Shoot. Oh, <laughs> this is this is hard. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to stick with my girl Winona. And it's okay if she doesn't win, but I, I really like her. So I'm going to stick with mine. Senior Guns. Audrey. Okay, question first. Our Marty McFly is Will Friedel, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to go Winona. I, I I could see them together. Okay. I could see them as a... Uh, Troy, oh, wait, not official, <laughs> not official. This is mental wait, contemplation. Wait, no, you know what? Winona's not that funny to me most of the time. I'm going to oh. stick with Brittany. I think she can do quirky and... Right. Yeah, um, I, okay, those two together, Will and Brittany. Okay, Brittany Murphy, sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Troy, we got a battle. Okay, you know, I, I do like my own Gabrielle Union pick, but when you mentioned Sarah Polly. <laughs> she is in one of the best remakes ever. Yeah. Dawn um, of the Dead. So, you know, remake good luck, you know, the Dawn of the Dead remake. So uh I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Sarah Polly based the entirely ghost on for Sarah Polly. Nice. I'm now convinced on Gabrielle Union, so we're all <laughs> over the place. So we're gonna spin again. <laughs> and I swear. see, and I thought Gabrielle Union too, but I just can't see her and Will. Yeah, that's the problem. Together, I think she would yeah. over. She would totally dominate that. I just want to see her yeah. again. <laughs> I just, Who's I gonna win? Her. Who's gonna win? <laughs> All right, this spinner likes males. Troy, Sarah Pauly. <laughs> nice. My rando <laughs> background pick wins. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's talk the method of time travel in the movie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? The DeLorean is the car. It's a car. It's a DeLorean. It has to speed up. The original script, it was a refrigerator. It needed nuclear power. Do we keep it a car? What kind of car? What are we doing here? Troy. Okay. One of the things that I liked about the DeLorean at the time was that the DeLorean was already a joke because the car company had gone under. And then when John DeLorean got busted for smuggling cocaine and there was the running joke that every DeLorean had a trace amount of cocaine in it. Uh, so <laughs> when they had bailed at the time, when they said the time machine's a DeLorean, I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. And so I started thinking, was there a 90s equivalent to a car that was a punchline? And I thought the Yugo oh. uh, because, you know, it's like, here's this Yugoslavian <laughs> car and it's small and it's. And, and it sucks, but you know, I thought that the idea of the time machine being in this crappy little car would be funny. So that's what I want. It made a famous appearance in Die Hard with a Vengeance as well. Yeah, that car. So that's relevant. Sharari. So I went with. I was thinking of things other than a car that could possibly be like the device that's used instead instead of it being a car. So I was trying to think of like what were gadgets and and things gadgets. What were these tech things that were that we would maybe think when we see when we think 90s we think tech. So I was thinking of things like really really 90s looking mobile phones or beepers or things like that. I was nice. thinking playing on a Sega Genesis or playing some kind of game and it warps. I don't know how that would work, but I was thinking does it have to be a car or is it just that Samuel L. Jackson has tricked something out that he always has, like like a Walkman or something, and that's <laughs> what he uses. So I don't know if anyone else went that route, but I was trying to think of like with like a beeper or like a phone or something. I was there. Be, and I'm you, similar to you. Just wait. Just wait till it comes. Okay. I, I have like a compliment to what you're doing here. The final one was maybe like if it would be... Again, this is more Will Smith days, but it, it maybe it could work is if it was also like you went into like a booth, but it's not, not like Doctor Who booth, but like, maybe like, yeah, you go into like buy records and tapes and stuff and you're oh, in like okay, yeah. a booth of some kind. Like I could see if Samuel Jackson's going into his favorite music store, brings in Marty with him and he just like has a secret booth that he uses for whenever he feels like time traveling. So That's that could be an option, but I'm thinking more like tech items and I'm not exactly sure which one's my favorite, but I feel like maybe we try something other than a car and that could be an option. Excellent. 
All right, Audrey. I had a Blackberry and a Pinto. Okay. Mm. Oh. I don't know why. And I figured like if he were in the car when he went back in time, the Pinto would be kind of unassuming. Even though it's small, it's still, I don't know. And I don't know why Blackberry. I don't know why those two things came in my mind, but that's what I had. A Blackberry. Now, I didn't decide if they needed to be used together, but it was a Blackberry and a Pinto. Okay, so here I go. I had the idea of like what was going on tech wise other than a car. And I was and this is gonna combine some ideas here. So I guess good I'm coming at the end. And I pivoted this just now when I heard what Troy said, Sharari said. I had a VR headset because in those little things that you stood in and you played. And I thought it would also come in kind of cool when he goes to his dad's house to tell him he's Darth Vader or whatever and he puts that <laughs> so he's seeing weird stuff. But you know what failed? The virtual boy was a joke that Nintendo came out with. Somehow hook that into it. That's where I'm going with this. A virtual boy. And maybe it could be in a demo booth at like a store demo booth type thing. But I'm going with the virtual boy. So start voting with Audrey. What do you want it to be? I'm going to go with the Yugo. All right. Shirari. I like going with something quirky in tech. So I, hmm. What is this thing that you called that failed? I'm bad at gaming stuff. You said the, the, the virtual boy. It was Nintendo <laughs> tried to make. My a... husband is giving me stink eyes right now. <laughs> he's like, why wouldn't you know what the thing? He's shaking his head at me. It, like, was, it was stupid. It was all red, and you had to like set it up and like play it like this. It had, like a little stand. Why? It's terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> he was trying. He's literally been flashing me a card, and he was like, why didn't you say Mario Kart or something? <laughs> I, I'm going to go with yours. I'm going to go with yours. I like it. <laughs> Virtual. Right. Or, I'm horrible. I don't, I, he's going to kill me. I don't know the name Troy. of it. <laughs> that. Uh I'm gonna go with the Yugo this time because I'm not. I'm not going to abandon myself. But. <laughs> <laughs> Don't abandon yourself. All right, uh, we got Virtual Boy versus Yugo. We're gonna spin the wheel again. All right. All right, Sharari, you are the double voter, so it'll be a Virtual Boy. Mm-hmm. Somehow, some way, maybe it'll be a Virtual Boy inside of a Yugo. It could. I mean, hey, <laughs> why not? <laughs> All right. So at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, uh, Marty plays a song. All right. This is uh, this is an oldie, but uh, well, it's an oldie where I come from. That is a little past the time of the kids there. He freaks them out a bit. Oldie where I come from. Kids are gonna love it. Blah blah blah. I'll start. I haven't started in a while. I have three came to mind. I have break on through by the doors and he could do some Jim Morrison stuff up there and they'd be like, what is this? I was thinking of a kick and Beatles song and I got back in the USSR. And okay. if we have an indeterminate 90s, we might have an indeterminate 60s. So I, I bumped it. I had a whole lot of love. Led Zeppelin as one. But I, I think break on through with the Jim Morrison dance is my real go to because I was like, OK, because he he gets down anyways when he's playing. Terrari, what did you have? Whew, so I had... Initially, when I was thinking of this, again, going with my original ideas, but I, I like break on through the other side. I think that would be great. The couple that I had, and these might be toss outs again because of who I was thinking would lead this. Would I had uh, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag by James Brown. I thought nice. that would be fun. If we were seeking for something happy, and then if we were going for more of the inspiration type thing is A Change Is Gonna Come by Sam Cook. I thought that might have been. I mean, Oh my gosh, this is so freaky. <laughs> I just thought also because I, I think really honestly I'm, I'm not going to downplay my choice because I was about to and I was like you know what I think a change is going to come could be interesting because no matter who's singing it no matter how what who was playing this I think just because of the time and the setting I think it would be really interesting to hear that kind of song and it doesn't have to be this like banger like bopping song I think that could have been something interesting to hear and Hopefully people heed that message. So I'm going deep with that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that one. All right. Audrey, you were freaking out over here. So let's go to you. Well, okay, so the songs that I picked go back to my choice for Doc Brown, which was Sam Jackson, that he's introducing, you know, since he would be at the age he would have grown, you know, that would have been his coming of age and all that in the 60s. He's a young adult. Yeah. Um, and he's introducing Marty to all this, you know, music. And I literally have Doc introduces Marty to Hendrix, Joplin, Cook, and Morrison. That is literally 
You, I don't know if you can see it, but it is there. <laughs> More is this so a Brandon stupid show on the top of the? No, I saw that. <laughs> and so the song at the dance, I picked Purple Haze because I felt like the lyrics, the music, everything that he's been introduced to. But I really like the Morrison song. I like both of your choices as well. Okay, lot. Troy, where is your mind at with this? Overthinking. So <laughs> I was going back to the whole thing about my idea of the setting being the pre-JFK assassination, pre-Beatles. And mm -hmm. so I, I thought of the Beatles. I, my, the obvious Beatles one to me was I want to hold your hand. But Zemeckis did that. Yeah, he made for, a whole movie. <laughs> Zemeckis did it. So then I thought satisfaction, because if you're mm -hmm. thinking of the riff oriented kind of stuff, that's when you have the, the riff and the distortion and everything, that, that will still sound like it's from Mars to kids in, say, 1961. Like, you know, Purple mm -hmm. Haze is an awesome choice. I really dig that. But those were my two as I went from the I want to hold your hand to satisfaction. So let's vote. Audrey, you'll vote first. <laughs> all of these are really good. I don't, I mean, I think all of them could work in their own way. I mean, as much as I like Purple Haze, I also like Morrison too. Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'll stick with Purple Haze because I feel like it would have been so mind blowing the same in the same way, but more of a think you're into the music, but you're also thinking about the lyrics. And at the time, I'm going to stick with Purple Haze. Troy, I'm going to go with that too. Okay, and Ferrari, I like it too. I like it. There when I go. heard it, I was like, that I I, I rock with that. <laughs> I roll with that. That's good. <laughs> Purple Haze wins. All right, lastly. Okay, so Power of Love is erased from this movie. It already happened. It was the 1980s. It wasn't even a soundtrack song. Sorry, Huey. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. So we need a new hip song. To, it's kind of an upbeat ballad to go the exploits of Mr. Marty McFly as played by Will Friedel in our movie. So let's start with... You know what? I'm going to spin to start. Let's see. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, let's do the spin. Or, I'm trying to be even Stevens on who starts and stuff, and I've lost track to being also random, so... Audrey, you're the starter. Man, okay. I I, I think I missed the, the the boat on this one because I was thinking more love song and not in power ballad e kind of. Oh, I like my choices, but I'm just gonna go with I don't want to miss a thing. By I'm again, it never happens in this universe. <laughs> no animal crackers. <laughs> Crazy Nicole <laughs> for gazelle. No animal crackers. Bruce Willis isn't gonna bite the I dust. I know. I had Maisie Star fade into you because I was thinking more of the love mm -hmm. song type thing. And I love that song. And okay. I had Interstate Love Song. And then I'm like, oh, maybe that one's a little too serious. But yeah, I don't want to miss a thing. I'll stick with it. All right. Sharari, what do you got? This is tough. <laughs> this one might be out there only because I was trying to think of what would be a fun song for this that captures like what's happening, I guess. And I actually had another older song. I had like Beatles songs in here. Cause I thought it would be interesting if I was watching a trailer to hear like a Beatles song playing and it's like the 1990s happening. And you're like, wait, what the fuck's going on? And then we switch nice. over and then yeah. you have the juxtaposition of things. And that's where I had, I want to hold your hand because I was just thinking of, I think it's, that's a song that has so many meanings to it. And I could also see there being like a play on that with visuals maybe like holding hands and like traveling into the future and going back all those things so we could have a ska I, band cover it you know <laughs> that could actually be yeah why not redo it oh, God, a ska band. <laughs> I'll redo the i can see it happening <laughs> with freddie prince just like bopping around oh yeah there you go. <laughs> i can oh. see it but that's that's kind of where i was going i was like what if we went with something like that to really set the mood of where we're going so yeah all right troy I had the Lemonheads cover of Mrs. Robinson Ooh. for the uh, That's Marty really good. Associations. And, you know, it's a 60s yeah. cover and would fit the 90s milieu. Okay. First one that came to mind was Semi Charmed Life by Third Eye Blind. It's mm -hmm. kind of hit those feel of that notes. But then all of a sudden I had this like, <sighs> all these songs came out of my head. I had just because they only had the one. In the meantime, Space Hog needs to be latched onto something because that song was awesome. And then just they, yeah. they're they supposed to be like the next Radiohead and just became a one hit wonder. Friday I'm in Love by The Cure. I had Monkey Wrench, Foo Fighters, and When I Come Around by Green Day as uh. possible, possible ones. But Semi Charm Kind of Life kind of was like the one that was just right there, right away. 
and kind of had a hard time thinking of other ones because I had that. So that'll be my pick. But this one all started hard, and then just once the gate opened, it was like too many songs that were coming through my mind. So voting, let's start with Troy. Man, I'm going to stick with mine. I'm going to be resolute. <laughs> all right, Shirari. I like mine a lot. <laughs> so I because I, I think I like that I'm going with a 60 song I guess instead and I I also think why not we we could have versions of it like we could have someone redo it I don't know who would redo it maybe that's a discussion but like I I think and it could be fun if we were playing like the newer version and against the older version and mixing with that so I'm gonna go with I want to hold your hand but maybe we hire someone to change it up a bit get the cherry pop and daddy's version get a swing <laughs> one going <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a while. Nobody has. <laughs> Audrey, what was your vote? I'm going to have to go with... Sh- okay, first, the limit. Ha- I love that version of Mrs. Robinson, but I think it might be... And I don't care how it sounds to a degree. I th- think that might be lost on youth. <laughs> like that some yeah. people are, aren't going to get that song, that version. It might be too over the head for if it's Back to the Future, even though I love it and I think it's a good fit. But I think... I want to hold your hand is, and if the way I'm hearing it in my head, kind of like a punky or ska version to be upbeat as well, because that's the thing about the power of love. It was a kind of ballad song, but it had elements of rock in it and kind of really cool tunes, like one of the biggest songs of the summer. So yeah, I'm going to go with Shirari. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold everyone's hand. <laughs> I'm stuck here between I know Mrs. Robinson. Story. You just want to use the spinner. Admit it. <laughs> oh. I think we should just have two different songs, one for the opening and one for the closing. Because those both are That's right. We get rid of back in time. We do both. Because <laughs> they are so vastly different, but they're both really that, that this is okay. This has been the hardest choice tonight. Was was that? Hmm. We're gonna go with both. Why not both? This is where we all become friends again. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic I, resolution. I love treat. the choices. I love the the vast differences of the songs. Well, everybody, the time has come. Let us sit back, kick back, relax, get the popcorn on, and let's hear what we've created. The following trailer has been rated F for fake. an ordinary life. We are so in sync, it's scary. <laughs> you know, this, this really tells me something about us. It's, it's gotten into you. And 1995 is not his year. <laughs> you got some guts, kid. How rude. But Dr. Brown is about to change all that. Guess what I did just for the hell of it. He's sending Marty 30 years back in time. You have a virtual boy. You bet your ass I do. Now, he's trapped in the past. Anybody home? Nobody's home? Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Wait a minute. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to. About to meet his future father. So I read comic books and watched cartoons, and I would just, I, I lo- like, love Magneto, and like, even though I, you're supposed to like Professor X and all the X-Men. And he's making an impression on his mother. So I sat around, and I looked around the table, and I looked at all these people on their faces, and everything he touches is like a rainbow. Now he's got to make his mother and father fall in love. Put your studies before your soulmate. No, not at all. I'm too scared to even talk about it. I want it to be as real as possible, and I want to be as free as possible. I mean, you need a guy who's who's happy and perky all the time, you know? Kiss the sky. And only Dr. Brown can help him get... Come on! Come on! Stop stalling! Back to the future. Will Fredel. We're like peanut butter and jelly. We're like jelly and jelly. Samuel L. Jackson. Ah, uh huh. Who's that for your ass? Who? Who? You get your ass in trouble, I get your ass out. Drew Barrymore. I believe that everybody has sort of two personalities roaming around inside of themselves. It explains, it explains the turmoil that we all go through inside of ourselves. Freddie Prince Jr. 
Five minutes, they, they knock on the door, breaks us up, and we do the kiss. Sarah Polly. I also have to understand, the first person who's ever believed in me even a little bit. And Jake Busey. I like it. I like it a lot. But I think I've got something even spicier. Back to the future. Well, gee, folks, we made some magic here today. That was awesome. Before this roundtable comes to a close, I just want to thank everybody again for partaking. It was a lot of fun. And before we exit, let everybody know where they can find your work. Let's start with Sharare. I'd say the Twitters, the Twitterverse, Twitter universe, Twitter world is where you can get me. And it's at it's just at Sharare Drury. And I'll spell it because my name is Persian and it's difficult. So it's S H A. R-A-R-E-H-D-R-U-R-Y. Drury like the muffin man who lives on Drury Lane. So. <laughs> I, I have to help people out. There's a lot of R's in my name and I'm Persian, so it's complicated. But Twitter is where you can find me. Gotcha. Audrey. Probably the best way right now is Audrey Lane, A-U-D-E-R-Y on Facebook. That's kind of where I kind of keep the hub for all of the things I do with Horror Hound, PopCon, and my own podcast whenever I get back to it or horrify on Facebook h-o-r-r-i-f-i excellent Troy on Twitter at Troy Brownfield and I'll go ahead and mention my webcomic spark shooter which has been running for several years is on webtoon we're rerunning it from the beginning now my friends at house 137 are doing the transfer that's a fun thing to check out and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon4KUHD. My written works at YSOBlue.com. More written work info on this episode and others at BrandonPetersShow.com. And that'll do for today. I'll be back tomorrow with 4K Blues Day. Until then, remember to keep positivity and an open mind in your online film chatter. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at thebrandonpetershow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at thebrandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found. you guys aren't ready for that yet but your kids are gonna love it <laughs>